Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. All peoples have their separate legends, their superstitions, and their fears. Julius Caesar once said that all Gaul is divided into three parts. But whatever their political alignments, the Gallic people shared their legends in common, and none more persistent and accepted than the belief in the second sight. Usually called a gift, but one wonders if perhaps it is far more the reverse of that. Our mystery drama, The Unearthly Gift, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Betsy Palmer. Let's begin with two definitions of second sight. The unearthly capacity to see things impossible for ordinary people to see, or the ability to foretell events in the future from the shadows they cast before them. A talent bequeathed to a large, raw-boned, and rather plain girl called Ruth Ann Mitchell. She and her grandmother, Bridget Carney, are the only women at a lumber camp high in the Bitterfoot Range, which sprawls across Idaho, Washington, and half of British Columbia. Ruth and Granny cook and keep house for the lumberjacks. And what can I say, Mumsade? And Granny, we feel very bad, especially Big Red. He was up there with Jason. I told him a hundred times to use a double rig, but he never wanted to listen. Where, uh, where is Jason? Oh, he is in the wagon, Miss Ruth. Uh, we'll have to take him down the mountain to Rock Fall and the main office. Well, I want to see him. Ah, no, I think that is not a good thing. He fell five, six hundred feet into that I, ravine. I, I want to see him. Let her, if she wants. Now, you'll hurry back. Mm. It, just just as soon as I'm sure Jason gets a burial be fitting him. You've, uh, you've got room to take me, Frenchie. Ah, mais oui. If you are sure you must. It's what I owe him. Not enough, but all I can do. Oh, Granny. If I knew, why couldn't I have stopped it? How can you hold back the hand of God, child? Ah, it's best, Diable. This is one bad road. You want me to drive, Benchy? You, a woman. Well, I know it like the back of my hand. My daddy was a straw boy. Greenwood's camps, and from the time I was 11, I, I grew up there. And your father, when did he die? Oh, in the, uh, the big fire. When the South Slope burned up. And your mother? She died having me. So you stay on with Granny. She is your only family. Yes. <laughs> All I have to love. And the Jason, too, you lost. Mm. Jason. Jason was was kind to me. Uh, why do you stay at the lonely camp like Greenwood with a bunch of roughneck like us? <laughs> where else would I go? To the city, you know, where perhaps you find a nice young man who... Me? <laughs> a plain, awkward country gal who stands head high or higher than most men and knows nothing but to just cook and to do the chores? Uh, his own did not think you were so, so plain. What did you mean about... Jason, when you said you... you might have stopped it. Well, I... I, uh... I, I, I had sort of a dream. I mean, hours before you came back to camp. Just... well, just when it might have happened. I, I, I thought, Frenchie, that I, I saw the whole thing just the way it happened. Uh, my family was from Bretagne in France. Uh, we are also like the Irish, what you say, gaily. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there also is the vue de l'ombre, what you say, the, 
the second sign. That is a, a gift you have. I, um, I, I, I don't know, Frenchie. I just don't rightly know. I, I don't suppose I really ever want to know. Pardon me, ma'am. Um, uh, you Miss Mitchell? Yes, I am. I'm Tim Farrell, new jack for Greenwoods. Told me down at the office I'd be riding up the mountain with you. Well, that's right, Mr. Farrell. They're just, uh, gassing up the old Jeep. Have you got, uh, got your gear ready? Most of it. Uh, what you see on me? My duffel bag and axe are right there by the pumps. Well, then I guess we're ready to go. <laughs> Except first, I guess I should say howdy. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't used to shaking hands with a lady, but put it there. I'm, uh... How about making it Tim? I ain't used to Mr. Oh, uh, yeah, well, my name's Ruthann. <laughs> All right, Ruthann. Do we travel? Best we do. It's a rough trail, and I, I really prefer going it while, while it's still light. This old Jeep handles real nice. But you were right about the trail. Maybe I should have let you drive. Well, I knew you figured I shouldn't. It's kind of nice to be a woman and just to sit down. Besides, uh, you handle the Jeep real good. So, hmm? you couldn't be Irish. <laughs> Some generations back, mostly. Though I'm just a roving lumberjack. Born in Montana, never been out of seven northwestern states in the good old U.S. of A. Oh. I don't figure you for all of that Irish either. Well, not so much on my father's side, but all the way down on my mother's. Oh, wait till you meet her mother, Granny Bridget. She cooks chow for all you jacks. Good chow? Best you've ever tasted. And I'm in love with her already. Now, what do you do? Well, I help her. Well, now, there's something to consider. If Granny comes through as strong as you promise, I may be half in love with you already without knowing. Ah. Uh. Tim Farrell, you brought back here three weeks ago. Ah, he's a charmer. He yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> but, um... But what, dear? Well, I, I... I don't know how to talk about it, Granny. You see something in his future? I, 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 I don't want to talk about it yet. Yet? It, 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 it just doesn't come clear. I... It's a full moon tonight. I reckon I'm just going to walk myself some more before I uh, go to bed. Is it Tim you're going to meet? It's no one at all but my own thoughts. Or maybe just to be alone and remember Jason. Don't wait up for me, Granny. I'll not close an eye till I know you're back home safe and sound. <laughs> Pretty moon, uh, ain't it, Ruth? I, I, I suppose, Big Red. I kind of hope you figure like I do that it ain't hung up there for nothing. But, uh, don't look to me. I, I, I'm not your woman. Not now or ever could be. You'd still shuck me off even with Jason gone? Or with Jason here. You, you and me have nothing for each other. And don't you make no move to me. Even with Jason not here to stand between us. <laughs> Big as you are, you think you could hold me off if I really had a mind to? Look, I, I hope I don't have to try. I don't guess you'll have to, Ruth Ann, as long as there are three of us. Who asked you here, Tenderfoot? Put butt out. If I'm not wanted, Ruth Ann? Let, let's just not make no fuss, all right? I'm on my way back to bed anyway. Good night. Why don't you mind your own business, Farrell? I was about to ask you the same question. I'm warning you. You're new on this crew. Don't ask for any trouble. I don't. Just the same, don't push any on me, brother. And lay off of Ruth Ann. She don't like you no more than I do. Yes. 
He come down whoop, so bad, eh? That's even. No <laughs> sight more beautiful. No sound near the heart. Hey, when you stop stripping your big red on me, we cut out the next big tumble, don't okay. okay. Hand me the big kettle. There's a lot, Ruth. <laughs> Ruth? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, Granny. I, w- I was thinking of Tim Farrell. <laughs> oh. I thought maybe that walk under the moon last night might not be all by yourself. <laughs> did you meet him then? Yeah. Good, I did, too. Big Red was pestering me again, just like before Jason died. You tell him... He as much as lays a finger on you, and I'll put broken glass in his grip. <laughs> now, don't you let that blowhard bother you. Well, it's not him that I'm worried about, Granny. It's Tim. Why? I'm, I, I, I'm trying to fight it. But I see it. There's death. The shadow of death over Tim's shoulder. And, and I'm somehow in the shadow, too. Oh, Granny, why do I have to see it? And then still know that I can't stop it. Oh, now, my warning. Don't rack your heart with what can't be changed. I told you before, Granny. I won't sit by if... What is it, Colleen? What are you staring at? I see him now. They've topped a tree. And Tim's stripping it. He's all alone in a... No! No! I've got to stop it. I've got to stop it. Dear Mary in heaven, watch over my lamb, whatever the Lord has marked her for. In silent supplication, an old woman prays for the one person she has left to love. A tortured girl with a terrible and unasked gift. What has that inner eye revealed to Ruth Ann as she races up the lumber trail to try to stop whatever threatens Tim Farrell? At the stand of trees, the lumberjack crew is thinning out. Frenchie and Chuck Turkle are on the big cross cut, finishing the high cut, while Big Red, having finished the notch, is now driving the wedges. Down the mountain, Tim is methodically stripping the branches from the top tree, his back towards them. This is the picture Ruth Ann saw in her mind's eye, sees now in actuality as she struggles breathlessly up the slope. Tim! Ruth Ann. What is it? Run from the tree. I'm not in its path. Look back. Look back. What? Ruth. Ruth. Run to the side. Run to the side. I'm the stump one. Well, I sure would never want one closer than that. You are right, Ruthanne. You covered me with your body. Well, you risked your life to try to save me. Well, I can't figure why we're not playing pulp. Oh. That tree was headed straight for where I was standing. What made it turn aside just far enough to miss us? The hand of God. Miss Alton, Tim. How are you, Adam? No, it's, it's all right, Frenchie. I don't know what happened. All path was set for 45 degrees off your line. Ah, uh, that, that no good tree. Sure you ain't neither of you heard. I, uh, oh, took a pretty good lick across the back from one of the branches. Uh, no, no, don't don't move, Tim. No, oh, I, I can't keep lying on you. I know Miss Ruth is right. Charlie has gone for this stretcher crew. Don't move till they are here. Yeah, but I, I can't keep I, lying. I don't mind, Tim. I don't want you to move. You listen to a woman when she talk. If there is something and your back is broke, yes. you move. You risk your life. Why take a chance? Well, that was a powerful...
awful good bowl of soup, Ruthann. I'm glad you liked it. Here, I'll let me take the tray. How's your back today? Oh, starvel. Now I know that there ain't nothing broke, I feel I better be getting back on my feet. And... No, sir. You just stay right where you are till the doctor says that you can rise. Ruthann, tell me something. Hmm? I can. Where were you going when you come up the mountain that day? Wh- Why do you ask? I don't know. I had the feeling. I mean, I hadn't even yelled timber before you seemed to know that that was a maverick tree and it wouldn't fell right. Well, maybe it was just... just intuition. I, I was born and bred in tree country and around camps and... I... But I, I've got to get back down. Granny needs my help. Ruthanne? Yeah? I want to thank you for saving my life. Well, if I had anything to do with it, I'm glad. Maybe someday I can find a way to make up for it. So it's taken you all with our boy eat upstairs. Tim. Well, he saved my life. I thought it was t'other way around. I mean, well, the branch he took across the shoulders would have... It would have caught me right across my neck, Granny, and snapped it like a chicken. Uh, he's a good lad. Are you in love with him? Ah, uh, Tim's not for me, Granny. Or any man. Oh, now, Makushla, what makes you say the like of that? You know, Granny, I don't want the gift, but I can't escape it. It's... Oh, it's like a lead weight around my neck. Or around my heart. Did my mother have it, Kathleen? <sighs> yes, she did. And did she know about... about my father? Not before she married him. Or she would never have married him. It never comes till we're well out of our teens. But, Granny, did she know that... that he was to die so young? She knew. And about herself. She knew that, too. And knowing that I would kill her in childbirth, she... She still went ahead and had me. Now, there's always the chance the good Lord will change his mind. Look at you and Tim. Only he hasn't. What? Granny, I wish I could see it clearer. I stopped it once, but... I, I don't know if I ever could again. Tim wears the shadow of violent death like like a collar. And and somehow I'm the one who's hanging it there. Oh, Granny. Granny, I I don't know what to do. Hey, Tim. Hi, Jack. How's it going? <laughs> Well, I reckon I'm about ready to come back and pull my weight. I'm getting tired of just chopping firewood. Yeah, it's putting you back in shape, though. I hope. You sure are one lucky tree, Jack. When that big old tree kicked around and started to fall out of line, you was dead at its tracks. And then we seen Roseanne throw up her hands and by dad, if we both couldn't swear on a stack of Bibles, that old tree didn't just... Veer off to the left, so she just missed you. I guess the wind caught her. It must have been. Though I don't rightly remember any wind that day. Chuck, I want to ask you if you remember something else about that day. Well, sure, ask away. You and Frenchie were making the saw cut. But Big Red cut the notch, and he was setting the wedges. Right? Oh, Yeah. And that tree was lined up to fall due south? Yes, sir, Tim. That was the line. And you know I was working away on the east. Forty-five degrees pretty near out of the fall line. Well, yes, you were for sure, Tim. Then how come she turned so out of line? Well, now, sometimes you'll get a tree that has a real tough core or twister on you. You or Frenchie ever had that happen to you before? Well, now... Not as you'd say, but out here, tell about Big Red. Well, you, 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 you'd, you'd have to ask him. Does he go around bragging he can fell a tree on a dime and he ain't never missed? Well, I have heard him say to Andrew. Yeah. 
Well, maybe I just will go ask him. Look here, Tim. You better watch your step. You get him riled up. Big Red is bad medicine. Hold it just a minute before you go inside, Chuck. Oh, hi, Big Red. It was you and Tim Farrell getting your heads so close together over up there by the woodpile. Oh, we was we was just uh, chinning. <laughs> I seen he was asking you a powerful lot of questions. I'd like to know them questions and your answers. Oh, oh, Big Red, you 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 like to break my arm? I might just do that if you don't loosen up. Well, I I, I don't want to make no trouble. Any but... trouble I'll handle. You talk. Don't leave nothing out. I want every word. Now, don't take on so, girl. You're in love with a boy. It's that, isn't it? Yes, Granny. I am in love with Tim. But that's only a little part of it. Now, don't be too sure. Is he in love with you? Oh, Granny, how could he be? I'm a plane. We won't go through that go-round again. Granny, I'm trapped. First of all, I have the vision that all I bring to him is danger. And second, well, if I want him to love me, how can I be sure that I'm not using the power to make him? I bought you some fresh wood for the stove. Hey, hey I'm, uh, did I, uh, <laughs> did I break in on something? Sure not at all, Tim. How are you feeling now? Oh, I guess I'm about back to where I was, thanks to Ruth Ann. <laughs> You'll excuse me, Granny Bridget and Ruth Ann. But I got a little business here, can't we? You get yourself out of my kitchen, Red Pilly, and all your riffraff with you. Not till something gets straightened out. Well, speak up and go. I'm talking to you, Farrell. And this time you ain't hiding behind any skirts. Chuck Turkle here tells me you're bad-mouthing me. Trying to say I dropped a tree across your back. I hadn't faced you with it yet. I wanted to get some more proof. But so long as you fetch the issue, that's what I have in mind. Glad you leave it on the table. Now, Ed, why you do this? Why you tired no, of... Frenchy, I'll handle this. Mr. Farrell, I'm calling you out. Pick your weapon. Knives, axes, PV poles are just bare hands. You and me's got a claim to settle. A claim? Well, let's just call it a plane falling out. But don't pay him any heed. You him. keep out of this, Ruth Ann. Indeed, I won't. You're all like a bunch of children, except that you're playing with lies. Ruth Ann. And it... Maybe I want to be caught out. I'll stand no nonsense like this in my kitchen. Near under 50 years I've served this camp. And I've never tolerated brawling in my kitchen. So you'll all take yourselves out of here before I... What? Granny. I'm out of here. Go back, you old kid. Give us some air. Oh. Ruth. Ruth Ann, is it, is it her heart? I, 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 I don't know. I've never seen Granny sick before. Frenchie, we miss you, dear. Go bring the wagon. We're taking her to town and the nearest doctor. Now you'll speak well. I bring the wagon to the door. <laughs> Granny, it's uh, it's nothing. It's uh, it's just a little, it's a little fainting spell. Oh, Tom, <laughs> maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm getting too old for so much excitement. Where's uh, where's where's who? Oh, I'm right here beside oh. you. Put your arms around me, Makushla. All right, now the rest of you stand back. You Don't crowd. Move, 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 move right there. I'm still crowding you, Farrell. Not now, Big Red. There's a time for everything. Yours and mine will come. Name it. When I take Ruth Ann and Granny Carney down the mountain and make sure Granny has proper care, I'll be back. With Ruth Ann? That's up to her. If I had my if way... you're coming back, Tim, I'm coming too. Why? There are 45 lumberjacks that still got to be fed till other arrangements are made. Granny will insist on that, and then... Uh, then what? Whatever's got to be unwound among us, it's going to take the three of us to do it. <laughs> Ah, 
How much does Ruth's second sight now see of the future? How much can she affect it? And how? Is the shadow of what's to come going to engulf her? Or can it be dispersed and blown away? Is the unearthly gift something that can prevail against earthly circumstance? Rock Falls boasts a livery stable, three assorted garages, a choice of hotels, no hospital but a small clinic with four beds and a first-rate, if overburdened, general practitioner. It couldn't have mattered less. The most efficient and highly staffed hospital would not have saved Bridget's tired heart. Like a stout old watch, the bearings were worn, the mainspring slackened. Are you there? Who then? I'm here, Granny. I'm, uh, I'm going away, you know. Oh, no. Yes, I, I can see it in your eyes, my morning. You know. Promise me something. What? You won't go back to that camp. Granny, who's to cook for all the men? Then find another. There ought to be something... Better in life for you. I, I don't know what it should be. You're telling me that you and Tim... Granny, Granny, me and Tim are a dream of yours. Because you want only the, the best for me. But even if it could be, you know what lies between us. The gift. Or by another name. Curse. Where is he now? He's gone back to camp. And you let him go. Well, how could I stop him? And I... I was needed here no longer. Now go and follow him. And leave you here. My time is used up. Come close. Granny. I'm never very far away from you. Soon. Soon you will be. Let me say this while I can. Some of us are the lucky ones... I was. How? I had the gift as well. Little I wanted it. It was clearer than yours. So I knew just exactly what to expect. I knew your grandfather, like your mother's poor husband, would have gone from me early. Granny, forgive me, child. I was just looking down the long corridor of time that I've left behind. Where was I? It doesn't matter, Grant. Oh, yes, just this. Yes, yes, it was this. About the gift. It came to me late and left me early. I can wish you only the same. The earlier, the better. You mean suddenly the second sight Stopped. It it wasn't there. That's what I mean. If I still had it, wouldn't I be able to read better for what you're to do? But I, how, how can you know if it's gone? It's like love. When love comes, you can't mistake it if it's for real. And when the gift goes, you'll know it. Just as sure... I love you, Ruth Ann. My love shall make you free. <laughs> Granny. Granny? Oh, Granny. What will I ever do without you? <laughs> By the old logging hole, this contest is to the finish. By the action of both contestants, there is no weapon but the human arm. First, I ask each if they must fight. Big Red. No man's going to make the kind of charges Tim Farrell's been making about me behind my back. And Tim, 
Red Pelly rules this camp and all of you by fear. It's time someone challenged him. I'm doing that. So you will come on set the bell. Now you both ready? Let's get on with it. Tim. You heard the man. Well, let's get it over with. Oh, Miss Holmes, where you come from? The doctor drove me back. Stop it! Stop it! No, 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 he's a lot of custom. You mean no one can stop it till one man is out cold. He's too big and strong for Tim. What I try to save is Ruth, but your Tim feels he must fight. If you won't stop it, I will. No. Because I will it. Like this. Okay, Tenderfoot. Now I'm going to stop the living hell out of you. I'm not asking no mercy. Come on. Just try to stop me. Just what? Here's one last go. For what? <clears throat> what the... Are, are, are you going to get up? I... I can't. He, you quit? I... Give up. Uh, what, what, well, just just what, take it easy. What? You're all right. Uh, Ruth? Yes? Boy, it seems like... seems like I've been here before. Now that Granny's gone and, and you're okay, I... I'm going away. Well, if that's what you want... You, you've got your own life to live. My own life. I ain't got the right to say it, but I... I was sort of hoping that we, we'd be sharing it. But I got nothing to offer a woman yet. Which is not for each other, Tim. Don't you know... I'm a shadow over you? That it's through me that you're risking your life? It appears to me it's through you it keeps getting saved. Twice. The legend is the third time round fate has to take its course. There's another crook here now, and I'm not needed. Forget me, Tim. Please, just forget me. Look, oh, uh, sorry, excuse sir. me, Miss Rosie. Hey, how you feel, Chomp? Huh? <laughs> I feel like I got run over by a bulldozer. Little yeah, man. Something else won't, eh? In the inside. Why did you make Miss Ruth cry? It's kind of the other way around, Frenchy. I guess I took a wrong notion. I wanted to marry that girl. She does not want to marry you? That's right. Did she say why? I don't know. She got some kind of crazy notion. She's a hex for me. Ah, uh, if she say that, then it is one big sham. She must be bad medicine for you. She knows. How? She has le don, the gift. She can read the future. Oh, come on. It is true. How do you think that big tree missed you that day? And now you make Big Red cry, Uncle. Well, heck with superstition, that's no real problem. What is a problem is that a man needs money to marry. And what do I have to offer? What? Big Red. Uh, I was just dragging what was left of me in here to say you whipped me fair and square and the best man won. You say you're leaving? I'll be on my way by tonight. Frenchy. What was that I heard him saying about he wanted to get hold of some money? Uh, the poor devil. He wanted to get married, but he has no stake. Yet. So he wants money real bad, huh? Well, uh, Big Red, what are you doing so far from camp? Oh, just stealing me a little breather, Chuck, and having a stroll. Heft in your axe in your hand. <laughs> This here axe ain't mine. Belongs to Tim Farrell. <laughs> what you doing with it? I got a use for him. I wouldn't figure him to land you anything of his. He didn't. He might get sore and take a notion to whoop up on you again when he finds out. <laughs> uh, he's uh, too busy packing up to leave camp. Leave? Yeah. Him and Ruth Ann. As soon as you get back with the jeep. Reckon they think they're going to get spliced. Well, how about that? Give me a lift back to camp. Oh, sure, sure. Hop in. Got 
That pay money. Yes, right behind us in the sack. All done up in them neat little envelopes, huh? Just like you, you. It'd be a lot of money to steal. And there sure wouldn't be much doubt if a fella got caught quick enough just where it came from. Huh? What you talking about? Just keep on driving, Chuck. Only you take the road to the flume with the fork. I got some plans for you. What? What are you doing with my gear, Rat? Well, why, uh, I was just going to carry it out to the Jeep for you. I'll handle it myself. What's the Jeep doing outside there? Where's Chuck? I reckon he took the payroll over to the straw boss. You drawing yours? No. And we'll ride over there and pick it up before I drive you and Ruth Ann down to town. She's coming with us? As if you didn't know. There's something funny going on. This isn't the way to the straw bosses, huh? Look out in back of you. What? Hey. Oh. Oh. Sure ain't, Mr. Loverboy. The road you're going this time, I'm sure you ain't coming back. I wonder why Chuck's so late getting back. I'd like to get down the mountain before dark. He should have been here at least one hour ago. I suppose Tim is going to leave with us. Oh, we have not much transport, Miss Ruth. Why don't you take a chance and stay with him? You don't understand, Frenchie. I do, but sometimes the bon Dieu is kind. And I think that grand-mère Brigitte would have wanted... Wait. Wait a minute, Frenchie. What is it? Oh. I see it now. I see it. Red. He has the payroll in Tim's duffel. He has Tim knocked out and tied up by the fork on the way down the mountain. And Chuck is trussed up just below the big room where it spills into the catch basin. He'll drive Tim unconscious into the ravine and send Chuck to die. Ground up in the logs in the catch basin. It'll look as if Tim killed him for the hero. A club here, he must hurry. Frenchy, go get the rest of the jacks and, and save Tim, Frenchy. I'll go get Chuck free. You, you, you crazy red. Like a fox, Chuck. Ain't no woman gonna make a sucker out of Red Pelly. She turned me down for Jason. Well, I took care of him. Climb. Climb? Up to the sluice? Why? I'm sorry, Chuck, but... I gotta set this up just right. Well, what are you gonna do with Tim? Tim's axe? I'm gonna bury it right in your skull, Chuck, so nobody has any doubts as to who. Oh, can. no. No, you're not, Red. Who's that? How'd you get up here? <laughs> Many's the time as a kid when the logs weren't running, I've shooted down the flume. From the camp right to this station. Oh, I I knew I had to move fast to stop you. You can't. It's too late. I've burned all my bridges behind me. Now, worst of all, it's got to be you, too. Oh, but you can't touch me, Red. I have the gift. The gift? I turned the tree aside to save Tim, and I held you back from stomping him. All with the help of God, and now I'm going to stop you again. Run, Chuck. Run. No, but, but you... no, he can't touch me. I'm sorry it has to be this way, Ruth Ann. From the beginning, when you first come, you were all I wanted. But you turned me down. What What are you doing? I'm going to open a sluice gate. There's 600,000 board feet of logs already on the way down. And we're going with the first that comes. If I can't have you, no one else can. Hey, you hear me? I hear you. You touch Roseanne, I'll kill you. Hey, none of the three of us going to stay alive. Come on up. You put down that axe, Red. Until I take your foot. Oh, old family. Oh, old fuck you. I've got to squeeze. Damn you. High up. Put your skull. Watch him. He has your axe. Hang on, hey. Ruth. I've got a peavy pole. All right, Red. You want to give up? Well, they won't do these guys. We have two men. Hey, on the platform, Frenchy. We need Roseanne. Hey, damn you. Do you fight me? Let go of the peavy pole. No. You've got to help him. Logs carried him right down the flume and over and into the catch basin. 
He was ground to pieces. I'm sure glad you're safe, Annie. Are you still going? Well, Red is dead, but nothing between us has changed. One big thing has. What? When I thought I had the power to stop Red, I found I didn't, Tim. I just had to rely on myself and hang on to the axe that he was trying to swing down on you. Are, are you are you telling me? Mm-hmm. The gift's gone. I don't have to be afraid anymore. It's a new life. It sure is. I. What? What did you call me back then? Annie, that's a new name for a new life. And the one that's going to be my wife's. Come on, Annie Farrell. Kiss me. If you like the name. <laughs> Anything you want to give me is just exactly what I like. Think of all the gifts you personally may have lost in your time. And how much you mourn them. Then think of the dread, oppressive gift that Ruth Ann lost and celebrate it with her. Sometimes I do have stories to tell you that end with that fond, childish phrase, and so they lived happily ever after. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... (laughs) 